Bezos, Jeffrey, if I may. Look, as soon as we need Prime and Space, I'm sure SpaceX would be happy to deliver those packages for you. But for now, stay in your lane, stay out the game. You're causing problems in space. Let's go. If you follow this channel, you know I'm a big SpaceX fan. I'm also a big ULA fan. I'm not really yet a big fan of Blue Origin, but I'm not a hater. But it's really hard for me not to speak up against Jeff Bezos. Now, if you haven't been following this, we have a mission and a directive to get to the moon by 2024. Now, NASA's put together the Artemis program with a mission of landing on the moon. In order to do so, they put out a bid for a human lander vehicle contract. Now, in April, SpaceX was awarded that as a sole source provider. Now, the expectations initially were not only that we were going to have one award, but that we were going to have two awards. Unfortunately, NASA didn't get funded at the level it thought and therefore revised its RFP to a lower amount. In March, SpaceX was awarded that contract for $2.83 billion. Now, NASA cited not only the cost, but spoke to the level of experience and mission success that SpaceX had over both the national team, which included Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman and Drapper, and also the smaller Dianetics. Once this was awarded, Jeff Bezos promptly filed a complaint with the Government Accountability Office, setting a moving goalpost, NASA changing requirements at the last minute, and the expectation that the initial award was going to be for two providers. Recently, we just saw the GAO come back with a decision saying that there was no ethical violations and that the contract was good and that the award was good. Prior to this, we see Bezos hedging his bets, running back to his home state where he has Amazon headquartered and complaining to Democrat Maria Cantwell. Now Cantwell, conveniently, was just so happened to be in the Senate pushing a bill that was eventually passed. The objective of that bill was to compete with China on a technology level. However, she slid in last minute an amendment at Jeff Bezos' urging to expand the budget for Artemis and require another pick for a backup redundant system for the human landing vehicle. That bill included a $10 billion additional earmark to be sent for NASA. But it's even more sneaky than that. It also included a stipulation that while SpaceX won the initial contract, they could not be considered for the second contract, and no money from that second contract would be allocated to the first. Which means that we're looking at SpaceX doing it for 2.83 billion, but Bezos would then have 10 billion to compete with Elon. On Friday, July 30th, 2021, the U.S. Government Accountability Office, GAO, denied protests filed by Blue Origin and Dianetics. The protests challenged their selection for the awards and the award of optional contract line numbers to Space Exploration Technologies, or SpaceX. Under Option A to Appendix H of Broad Agency Announcements, Broad agency announcements typically provide for acquisition of basic and applied research for new and creative research or development solutions to scientific and engineering problems. The rules for these procurements are not the same as those for standard competitive federal procurements as agencies generally enjoy broader discretion in selecting proposals most suitable to meeting their research and development needs when utilizing broad agency announcement procedures. The announcement was issued by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, for a demonstrated mission for a human landing system for lunar exploration. NASA made the award to SpaceX for a total evaluated price of $2.84 billion. After noting that SpaceX submitted the lowest price proposal with the highest rating, and that the offers submitted by Blue Origin and Dianetics were significantly higher in price. NASA also concluded that the agency lacked the necessary funding to make more than one award. The challenge filed with the GAO, the protesters argued that the agency was required to make multiple awards consistent with the announcement's stated preferences for multiple awards. 
Alternatively, the protesters alleged that the agency was required to open discussions, amend or cancel the announcement when NASA, after the receipt of proposals, determined that it had less funding than it needed to support multiple HLS awards. The protesters also argued that NASA unreasonably evaluated all three of the proposals. Finally, the protesters argued that NASA improperly waived a mandatory solicitation requirement for SpaceX. In denying the protest, GAO first concluded that NASA did not violate procurement law or regulation when it decided to make only one award. NASA's announcement provided that the number of awards the agency would make was subject to the amount of funding available for the program. In addition, the announcement reserved the right to make multiple awards, and a single award, or no award at all. In reaching its award decision, NASA concluded that it only had sufficient funding for one contract award. GAO further concluded there was no requirement for NASA to engage in discussions, amend, or cancel the announcement as a result of the amount of funding available for the program. As a result, GAO denied the protest arguments that NASA acted improperly in making a single award to SpaceX. Now, as if the desperate plea to the GAO wasn't enough, what does Bezos do? He tries to buy his way in. That's right, he penned a letter saying that he will personally front NASA $2 billion in order to reconsider the contract. And perhaps not reconsider the contract even. Hey, I'll provide $2 billion. He even left it open-ended saying, tell me what you need in order to provide a backup system to SpaceX award. To me, that doesn't sound like anything other than a good old fashioned bribe. As reported by Yale Kennedy, back from space and wanting more, Bezos Blue Origin offers to bridge $2 billion for NASA's lunar contract. Jeff Bezos, freshly back from space, offered to cover $2 billion in fees for NASA's human landing system HLS program in an open letter to agency's administrator Bill Nielsen. Blue Origin will bridge the HLS budgetary funding shortfall by waiving all payments in the current and next two government fiscal years up to $2 billion to get the program back on the right track, Bezos said in his letter. Last April, NASA awarded SpaceX $2.89 billion contract to continue development for the first commercial human lander that will safely carry the next two American astronauts to the lunar surface, the agency said. The choice was disputed by Bezos, who reiterated his position in the letter, saying that instead of investing in two competing lunar landers as originally intended, the agency chose to confer a multi-year, multi-billion dollar head start to SpaceX. That decision broke the mold of NASA's successful commercial space programs by putting an end to meaningful competition for years to come. Instead of a single source approach, NASA should embrace its original strategy of competition. Competition will prevent any single source from having insurmountable leverage over NASA. Without competition, a short time into the contract, NASA will find itself with limited options as it attempts to negotiate missed deadlines, design changes, and cost overruns. Bezos added in the letter that in April, only one HLS bidder, SpaceX, was offered the opportunity to revise their price and funding profile, leading to their selection. Blue Origin was not offered the same opportunity. That was a mistake, it was unusual, and it was a missed opportunity. In addition to bridging the HLS budgetary funding shortfall, Bezos says that Blue Origin will, at its own cost, contribute to the development and launch of a Pathfinder mission to low Earth orbit of the lunar descent element to the further retire development and schedule risks. In addition, he suggested that Blue Origin accept a firm, fixed price contract for this work cover any development cost overruns and shield NASA from partner cost escalations concerns. I believe the mission is important. I am honored to offer these contributions and I'm grateful to be in a financial position to be able to do so. NASA veered from its original dual source acquisition strategy due to perceived near term budgetary issues. And this offer removes the obstacle, Bezos said. Now, Bezos isn't just meddling in government affairs and screwing up Artemis and most likely delaying it well past 2024. No, he's gone a step further and is now messing with longtime friend and partner, United Launch Alliance. Now, Tory Bruno, the CEO, has been playing it kind of coy. However, insiders say that he's not so happy. And the reason he's not so happy is he has a brand new rocket sitting there waiting to launch. 
and it's called the Vulcan. ULA is the oldest, most successful government contracting group or agency that's been ferrying satellites and DOD projects to space long before anyone else to include SpaceX and yet Blue Origin as well, even though they have not gone to orbit and they need to soon or else they'll lose all credibility. However, ULA is not upset because of that. They're upset because they're delaying their Vulcan rocket. And why are they delaying it? Well, in 2020, Congress put forth a directive that no one can fly on Russian made engines any longer into space fairing any of their projects or their missions. What that means is in 2022, when this directive takes place, all companies need to be flying on American made products. Now that wasn't a problem because in 2020, Blue Origin and Bezos were quick to offer up their BE-4 engine to power the Vulcan. Now the Vulcan was flying on a Russian engine and now needs to be E-4s. It was supposed to be delivered in early 2020. Bezos and Blue Origin have come out and said it's not going to be ready. In fact, it will probably be late 2022 before they're able to deliver those rockets. Now that leaves ULA in a very bad place. They have bookings with DOD and other top level agencies in the United States to deliver missions to space, but they're not going to be able to do so if they don't have any rockets. So once again, we're seeing Bezos causing issues for not only the United States government, but also for one of their most successful space contractors, ULA. As reported by Eric Berger, increasingly the ULA Blue Origin marriage is an unhappy one. It seems unlikely that everyone in space community will be celebrating Bezos' trip to space. Bezos made his fortune at Amazon through competitive pricing and timely delivery of goods to his customers worldwide. But so far at least, his Blue Origin space company has been a less reliable vendor. This has been especially of concern to the United Launch Alliance, which is relying on Blue Origin built engines for its new Vulcan rocket. The US Space Force is also watching, as it's counting on the Vulcan booster to help launch some of its most precious satellites into orbit. Blue Origin's powerful BE-4 rocket engine, which burns methane and liquid oxygen, is years late. Privately, multiple sources say the relationship between Blue Origin and United Launch Alliance is not good. There is a great concern about the engine development. One person in the industry said, it's much more than Tori Bruno, CEO of ULA, is showing publicly. There is a great concern that Blue Origin is not putting enough attention and priority on the engine. For years, United Alliance Chief Executive Tony Bruno has been saying that the new Vulcan rocket, powered by two BE-4 engines, would launch in 2021. However, he recently told Aviation Week the first launch would slip into 2022. Bruno said this was due primarily to the mission's customer, Astrobotics, which Moon Lander was not ready. Technically, Bruno said, Vulcan still had a chance to be ready for a 2021 launch. This seems highly unlikely because it's already July and the United Launch Alliance still does not have a pair of flight engines. After receiving the flight engines from Blue Origin, ULA needs to attach them to the Vulcan rocket, roll it to the launch pad, and conduct a lengthy series of tests before a hot fire ignition. After this hot fire test, the rocket will be rolled back to the hangar and prepared for an actual launch attempt. As of January, Bruno was saying this hot fire test with the flight engine would take place this summer. That will no longer happen. In a response to a question from ARS, ULA declined to offer an update timeline for when it expects to take delivery of the flight-ready BE-4 engines from Blue Origin. The company also declined to comment on any tensions with Blue Origin. He's predicted Blue Origin, one source said, Bruno's lack of public criticism on the BE-4 engine delay. It does no good to throw Blue Origin under the bus at this time. Bezos company has not been forthcoming about why the B4 engine has been so late. Development of the engine, which has 550,000 pounds of thrust and is more powerful than the space shuttle main engine, has been going since 2011. However, there has been a lot of turnover in leadership at Blue Origin's propulsion program with Bill Kurz and Mike Crean leading the company in 2018. And Kurz's replacement, Danette Smith, only lasted about a year before leaving in 2019. Tony Bruno has confirmed there have been problems with 
turbo machinery inside the engine. But he has said those problems have been addressed. Here's my take. We really need Bezos to step back. Sure, he can play in this space, but prove yourself first. He's putting the cart before the horse, and it's really, really disgusting to me because it's causing delays for other more successful companies and for us and our mission to the moon. Artemis is now in jeopardy. It's going to be delayed. We have to wait to see what happens with the outcome of the actual new bill being passed in the House of Representatives. But even then, it relies on appropriation of funds, which points back to Biden. Now, Biden said he will support NASA and space, but to what extent, we don't know. But now we're looking at Bezos throwing three attempts. One, for the GAO Accountability Office complaint. Two, running back to his senator and trying to slide in an amendment to a bill so that he gets more money than Elon to build a secondary lander. And lastly, we see a desperate personal attempt to pen a letter to Bill Nielsen of NASA saying, look, I'll pay for it all myself. I just think he needs experience. Look, like I said, if we need packages or we need logistics done, you can team with SpaceX and more successful companies like ULA. You're causing ULA delays, you're causing the government delays, and you're costing us taxpayers a whole lot of money. I'm glad you stepped away from Amazon because you got a mess on your hands over at Blue Origin. Go there, figure it out, make a couple test orbits, then get in the game. Because right now, man, you're a marketer. You're not an engineer. You can't compete and you're causing problems. Till next time, I'm Hill Phantom. Jeff, please go away. See ya.